Hey everyone, so in the previous video I mentioned that there are multiple ways to have an object have real-time reflections on it. So you can turn an object into a mirror. Well, this is going to be an entirely different method, but before I get into it, I just want to recap one point from the previous video. And in that, I mentioned that there's two types of reflections, just as there's two types of shadows, and that there are baked shadows. So these are the ones that are pre-rendered and essentially turned into textures and that they are unchanging. The second type are real time. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So just like the previous video, we looked at making real time textures. Um, in this one, it, it's an entirely different method. So what elements are needed to make this one work? First of all, you're going to use a render texture. There's not much to say about this. I'll demonstrate how to create a render texture, but the key difference from the last one, the last one we use something known as reflection probes. In this one, you're just gonna create a second camera. And so just as you have the point of view of the player with the primary camera, you're gonna have a second camera that will also be looking at the environment from a different angle, and that is going to be applied to an object. So rather than having a static texture, you're constantly using the output from a camera to change what that object looks like. Okay, so let's get into it. And here we are in a new project. So Let's go ahead and create our environment. This time, I'm going to use a road because the mirror I'm going to demonstrate will be a rear view mirror. And I want to show a rear view mirror because there's a challenge associated with using a camera to basically create the texture. So, game object, 3D object, plane. So here's the 2D image that's going to be the material for the road. We just drag and drop it. Okay, so we can see that uh, the camera is right here and it's pointing out in that direction. So we wanna rotate this. So we'll take our road, we'll rotate this and then we'll just tweak the numbers here. Looks like it needs to be negative 90. And now we're just gonna stretch this. So, Okay, let's make it like 15. And let's just click on our camera. So it looks like we're kind of off center. So we'll just move our camera by grabbing the X axis there. And you can see the preview down here. So when you have the camera selected, you get a preview in the corner here. And just let's lower it down towards the road. So as I mentioned, I'm going to do a rear view camera, uh, excuse me, a rear view mirror. I'm not going to make a full car. That's just a, a 3D model. The functionality of the mirror is really wanna, what I want to focus on. So let's just center this up a little bit. So it's going to look a little bit odd having an object just floating here, but functionally you'll know how to do it if you're trying to, again, have the interior of a car and you want there to be a rear view mirror. So now what we want to do is we're going to go to game object, 3D object, and we'll create another plane. And we will make this one. This will be the mirror. I'm not going to change the size yet. I want to see how the camera aligns with this object, though. So obviously it's too big for a rear view mirror when you look at the size of the road. But again, I want to see exactly how the image overlays onto this before I start changing its perspective. So as I said, you need to right click, create, and we're gonna create the render texture. And we'll just call this mirror. And for now we can leave it as it is. I'm not too worried about this. You can look at quality of the image and things like that. Do you want anti-aliasing? So some of it's straightforward. And we can certainly look at that in another video. But a lot of times, these settings, you're basically just tweaking until you get the effect that you want. And always keep in mind that, generally speaking, the higher quality the image, uh, the more uh, resource intensive it takes to create that image. And so uh, you need uh, more and more powerful hardware to make this uh, operate within a, an acceptable frame rate. Okay. 
So, as I mentioned, we created the render texture. Now we need to create a camera. So, game object, camera, and we'll just align this. So now, this camera is going to be the camera point of view of the, the, the point of view of the player. This will be the mirror. Well, the mirror is facing out in the opposite direction. So we have to rotate this in the direction the camera is facing. Again, we'll come up here just to get the exact numbers. And we'll just move this back a bit. So now, we're also going to add another object. We're going to add just, and you'll see why in a minute, but we're going to just add a, another random object back here. So we're going to just create a 3D object, and it's a sphere. And we'll get to why we need that in a minute. I'm just going to rotate around, make sure that's really above the ground. Okay, so almost all the players are in place. So we have this, but we haven't done anything with it. We now need to associate this with a camera. So we go to the camera, and important, it's not the player camera, it's the camera being used for the mirror. You take this, and you drag and drop it where it says target texture. So in other words, this camera is going to take its output and put it into this texture, just as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So now you're starting to see the connection. We have the camera dropping its output into its texture. The texture will then go into a material. That material will be on the surface of the mirror. So just as I showed in the last video, you can create a new material just by dragging and dropping the texture. Okay, so now we have a reflection. It's upside down, so we'll, we'll have to fix that. But we're getting closer to what we want. So let's just rotate that. Oops. We'll come here again. Is it negative 180? There we go. All right, so now that we know that this is the proper alignment, now we can change its size. So I've got the plane selected, which is going to be our mirror. And now you can just start. All I do is click on the scale tool and I'm just going to grab the axes and, you know, make this kind of the size is going to be too big, of course, but shape it like a rear view mirror. And kind of interestingly, in some newer vehicles, it doesn't use a mirror anymore. It actually truly is a monitor. I believe it was a U-Haul when I was moving into uh, this place. Um, the it did not have a rear view mirror per se. In place of the rear view mirror, it actually had a, a monitor. It had a screen, and there's a camera projecting to it. So interestingly enough, what we're doing um, in a simulated environment is being duplicated in real life. So let's just run this. So now it's kind of hard to see, but see that orb. What's well, on the wrong side, and this is the challenge that I wanted to mention. So I'll actually just raise this up a little bit, and we'll make it a little bit bigger, so it's easier to see, and we'll also move it a little bit closer. That's better. So we know that the orb is on this side. Well, the camera is facing towards us, so it's reversing it. There's actually a really easy fix for this. So what you do is you take that object, our mirror, and what you do is the X needs to be a negative scale. Just like that, it flips it. And so now you have a functioning rear view mirror. And actually, that's just about it. Uh, obviously, we could say have the camera, since you'd be driving the car, I could put you know motion associated with this so you could see that things drop into the distance if you want. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So let's move the camera forward. So technically, you don't need any code to make the reflection work. But because I want to demonstrate what's going on, uh, we'll have this, we'll apply a little bit of code just to give this motion. So for the plane, let's do add component, physics, rigid body. We're not going to use gravity this time. 
we're just going to add a simple script. So right click, create C sharp, and we'll call this move mirror. We'll open that up. And all we're doing is applying velocity. So get component, rigid body, velocity equals new vector three. So it's not moving along the X axis. It's not moving along the Y axis. It's moving along the Z in a positive direction. So let's do two. And again, the coding is absolutely not necessary for the reflection. I just want to demonstrate that it really is um, going to uh, work in real time, that it's not a static image. And actually, sorry, I realized that I hadn't actually applied the script to that. And there we go. And actually what we need to do too is since it's in motion, we want the camera to be attached to that. So let's, sorry about that. So we need the camera to be just in front. Not sure why we're getting that error message because I didn't do anything special. Non-convex mesh collider with non-kinematic rigid bodies no longer supported with Unity 5, since Unity 5. Sorry, I can always research that later. Not sure why it's telling us that. And there we go. So now it's working. It didn't work before because the camera wasn't moving because the camera wasn't associated with the mirror. So sorry about that misstep. But you can see now that indeed it is going. The uh, image is changing to get a better sense of it. We could always attach the player camera. Also to the plane. So now the player's point of view is also moving. So now both cameras are moving, so we're passing the orb, and it will appear back here. There we go. Okay, so I think that should just about do it. I hope that this has been helpful. So as I said, this is the second of multiple ways that you can have an image, an animated um, real-time reflection on an object. So... I guess that's about it. So if you found this helpful, please leave a like. And if there's any other examples you'd like to see, please leave a comment and tell me what those examples would be. And uh, have a good day.